kind to the editor. Your name and spell it, please. G.D. Gartner. G-D-G-A-R-N-E-R. Uh, G.D., why are you here at Sundance? I've come out to promote my new book, Through the Eyes of Madness, and I'm affiliated with a couple of great organizations here who are providing benefit to uh, beneficiaries around the world, and that's my ambition with my book, is to help educate children around the world. And so we've come out to uh, kind of get the word out there and make people aware of what we're trying to accomplish. Now, your background uh, is not, uh, you're, you're not an artist uh, for life. Uh, can you give me a thumbnail of uh, how you came to this, uh, this stage of your life? <clears throat> Art is kind of a passion of mine, something that's kept me alive through the difficult times in my life. But uh, originally, I was uh, a bit of an entrepreneur, owned three companies or corporations in the Seattle area. And one day, I decided to divest the whole bloody lot. And within 30 days, I had moved into a backpack. Uh, and to this day, I pretty much remain possessionless. Everything I own. Uh, it's in a backpack and I've been traveling the world now for five years, all seven continents, dozens and dozens and dozens of countries, too many to count. I've lived amongst the Maasai tribes in Africa, um, nearly died on Mount Everest, and I've had a pretty harrowing trip, but a really emotional moving, emotionally moving trip that has uh, changed my reason for being here on this planet. Uh, well, I guess needless to say, you're, you're, you're walking the talk, um, I, and I don't want to say, you know, I'll give you a chance to to gloat or anything like that, but really the message here is uh, is uh, not necessarily for everybody to drop what they're doing and uh, adopt your life, but uh, you, you really have found a way to express the message that's uh, trying to be captured here in your life. Yeah, you got to focus on the things that are important in life, and I kind of decided that helping those that don't have an opportunity to succeed is something that I should do rather than helping people who already have uh, circumstances of wealth and opportunity. And uh, so far we've been able to educate uh, children in three continents. My goal is to eventually educate uh, children on all seven continents and start my own foundation where I can bring families in for family mentorship and bring people from around the world together to really understand that we're one people, regardless of race, culture, socioeconomic background. We just want to do well for our families, we want to educate our children, and uh, we're just kind, uh, compassionate people when you strip away all the, all the trappings of the modern world. And you've seen them all around the world and you realize how much commonality, I mean that's almost a cliche, how much commonality there is amongst everybody from a Maasai warrior to an Angelino. Absolutely, and you know the thing that's amazing to me is in most of the countries I've visited, people haven't had enough food to eat, but what they did have, they would share have up with me, um, regardless of uh, my background and my race, um, people have just identified with me as a human being and it's moved me to want to be able to help people and provide opportunities. And kind of my motto is that I don't want to go into a community and tell them how to improve their way of life. I want to provide them with the opportunity to become educated, provide their children with the opportunity to learn, have the, the skills and the capability to do the things that they want to do. And I want to teach them how to move mountains, but I want, to, I want them to choose which mountains to move. Um, can you get a little bit more specific or anecdotal? Um, I, I'm, I'm getting an image here, but maybe it's not the right image. Uh, can you give me a, almost like a, a case a scenario or something like that? When you visit a, a community, mm -hmm. how do you engage them? What do you do? Well, you know, I've, uh, I've lived in the jungles of Nicaragua. I've uh, spent time with the Maasai tribes in Africa. And um, whatever they do is what I do. So I don't try to bring my culture to them. I try to learn what they do and live them the way that they live. And when I started my trip, I did everything from uh, building palapas in the jungle for 50 cents a day in the Yucatan Peninsula to picking coffee beans. So that I had an opportunity to really understand the culture and understand how I could interact with them. And it gave me um, an opportunity to see eyes, see, see life through their eyes. And uh, it's changed me as a human being uh, much for the better. And uh, I couldn't be happier living out of that backpack. And I can assure you, I'm not going back to the, to the other side, so. Now, were you, <laughs> I don't want to have you relive your dark past. Were you like uh, totally stressed out? I mean, paint the picture of what you were like before you stuffed everything into a backpack. 20 hours a day, seven days a week, three companies in the Seattle area that owned me. I didn't own them. Um, successful business ventures, but um, just consumed my time. And, you know, drove me slowly to madness with wanting to, further each venture um, beyond its existing success and um, help all of my clients and help the people in my infrastructure. And um, I feel good about those things and I'm happy that I did it and I wouldn't undo it, but I'll never go back to doing it again because it's just not what I'm put here to do. I'm, I, I really just want to help people now that don't have the, the opportunity or in the position to provide education for their families and it's just it's what drives me and motivates me now and uh, I think it's probably the best decision I've ever made.
Although those business ventures gave you the tools in a lot of ways, certainly experience, but tools to do some of the things that you're still doing today. So there's a thread of continuity. No, no question. Provided me with the opportunity to do the things I'm doing. And one of the interesting things that the media is really starting to pick up on with the book is that um, I've hidden artifacts on each of the seven continents. So it's not something I typically talk about. Um, but the book is encrypted with a mathematical code. All the artwork that you can see behind us is encrypted with code. And that code is linked to my website. So every three years I do a new publication and it allows people the opportunity to interact with my book, some of the other media that I have out there, so they can find those artifacts on each of the seven continents and someday somebody will find what it is that I worked all those years for. So um, it's just a way of freeing myself up of the, of the material burdens that uh, have ruled my life and it's given me the opportunity to become a different human being and I'm not so sure I like the old guy, so I'm happy to be the new guy. <laughs> now, so you're, in a way, you're, you're taking the geocaching into the realm of art. Yeah, you know, but we're doing it global. We're doing it on seven continents, and um, we're making it a little bit more difficult than that. The code is the the requirements for cracking the code is going to take a hive mind. It's going to take a community of people working together in unison, because it re it really is seven continents worth. And I haven't made it easy. We've uh, built some intellect in there, and I've assured and built in sets of checks and balances that people only of true compassion and a good heart will find what it is I buried at the end of the rainbow. And those that are strictly in it for monetary gain. Um, will probably not be successful. So, should be fun. Uh, let's talk briefly about your art that, mm -hmm. that's here on, on frame. Uh, are, you, are you trained as an artist? Where did you art school? Uh, what, could, what about this? could barely draw a stick, man, before I started to travel. My life has been dedicated to the business world, and so I've really just traveled with me. Everything that I could fit in a single backpack, a small leather bag with pencils, and uh, a couple of watercolors that I could fit on flat slabs. And, uh, you know, just doodled a sketch here and there and uh, met people who had artistic skills and just looked over their shoulders and copied away as I went and, um, you know, just kind of developed um, my artistic style through journaling. So everything that you see, my paintings, all of the work that you see out there, is, are, they're all sketches from my journals. They're all things that I've maybe blown up in a little bit bigger format. Um, but they're just really entries in my journals which tell my life story and make it possible for me to look back at one picture and remember the details, the smells, the people that were in the restaurant or the cafe when I was journaling, the people that I met that day, the people that I was staying with. And uh, really it's a pretty cliche, but it's the pictures, a thousand words thing. For me, those things um, trigger a whole set of memory responses that allow me to retain a lot more detail about my trip and my travels than just words could do on a piece of paper. So that's why I, uh, that's why I picked, up the, uh, picked up the doodling. Very good. Oh uh, no, quickly, uh, uh, using the metaphor of uh, you know, uh, memory responses, mm -hmm. what, what are you hoping to trigger in, uh, in the minds uh, and the hearts of people who come here to uh, this event, this uh, Green Initiative event? You know, it's pretty simple. We all have an obligation um, to do well for our families, and I don't think anybody would contest that. But what I want people to recognize is that our family is outside the walls of our home and that really we're a human family and that everybody across the world, across all seven continents, has the same objectives and the same agenda. When you strip away the politics and, and the glamour of the world, we want the same basic fundamentals for our family and the people that we live with, and we're really all one people. And I want people to recognize that, and I want people to reach out, help the person next to them, whether they know them or not, and I want us to be a community who takes stewardship of our planet, um, but also stewardship of our communities and helps educate our, our youth so that they can make the changes in the future that we're not able to make today. Uh, last question then. You've, you've traveled the world and you've uh, interacted deeply with, with the world's cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, are you pessimistic now about uh, the trends, the, uh, uh, you know, everything that's in the news about, uh, uh, you know, everything from global warming down to uh, germs, just everything? Or are you more optimistic about how humans can really be, uh, become good stewards of this earth? You know, I'm, I'm just, just the opposite. Now that I have had an opportunity to live with people and understand people of all cultures from all different backgrounds, um, it's clear to me that we are all of a like mind and it's just a matter of time before that like mind builds enough inertia that we will have a positive impact on our planet, the surroundings around us, and um, my eyes really have been opened that there are more people out there trying to do good in the world than you would assume by watching the news and what you see in the papers, and it's just a matter of time before we all come together and build something so positive and so synergistic that it will not be hauled off track by any negative impact. Right. Any last words? Nope. I think that concludes it. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. <laughs> All right.